Now, interesting, so much was made during the week in the press about the multiple goal scorers at Collingwood. Well, tonight, they've got three. Yeah. The other interesting statistic, Dennis, is that uh, if they stay in the 40s, as they, they may well do, against the kill to the other top side, they only have, uh, scored 45 points. Against all other comers, they average 129 points. Yeah. My, my view has always been with Geelong. Everyone talks about their midfield, which is magnificent. I think their best third's their back third. Yep. Their defence has been so hard to score for so long. Still is. Can attack and can defend. And they've just uh, prevented Colling uh, Collingwood from getting any easy ball in there. Bartel to Enright. Enright can go again to Chapman and does. And Chapman in the back pocket. I think both sides would have learned something about their forward lines tonight. Maybe Collingwood needs a little restructuring. Here's Ablett in the goal square. Finds Milburn, and I think from what we've seen tonight, the combination that Geelong will be looking at very closely is Podsy Adley and Mooney as the key forwards. Comes out wide and it's taken by Wojcinski. Wojcinski plays on to Mackey. Mackey's kick, well he's mastered that one off the side of his boot, but this time he finds Wellingham. Midhurst would make a difference, you feel. A good Midhurst in that Collingwood forward half, but Thomas's long ball in. Dawes did well at the back. Davis. Aubrey held up. It's that, it's that ability of the Geelong back six to pro in any size and shape. I think just at the moment, Scarlett's on Leon Davis. Yeah. I mean, basically, they'll take whoever's there. Doesn't look, I mean, if they're outmanned or what have you. Great crowd, 88,000. Of the arm free kick, Darren Jolly. It's the biggest Grab crowd, the home and away crowd Geelong's ever been involved in. As Jolly goes long to full forward. Scarlet getting back to Milburn. So 88,115 Milburn. Is that out on the fall? It is. Your yeah, biggest home and away crowd ever for Geelong. And I think it's the biggest home and away crowd without the Bombers involved since 1981 for any two teams. So we've had three crowds of 80,000 plus this year and Collingwood have been involved in all three. Says a lot about football in Melbourne, doesn't it? Magnificent. That's a good kick. No, fading, fading, fading. Oof. Jolly doing the roving, handballs back. Well done, Mackey. Geelong keep their nerve. Well, it's out on the fall again for the third time in this quarter. It's a fair point you make, Lee. When you look at the uh, Geelong defenders, man for man, I guess they range from, say, your 189, yeah. your Corey Enright, and your Josh Hunt through to your 192, 193, Andrew Mackey, Harry Taylor. So, fantastic uh, spread of height and speed. Um, Got found out against uh, uh, Carlton, yeah. but uh, they seem to be a unique case at the moment, the Blues forward line. Thomas plays on, long ball, down towards full forward, his 19th possession, lurking behind, Wellingham had it for a moment, socket away a couple of times by Johnson, standing his ground was Turvey, Johnson came again, close to the boundary line and bundled out as Bartell. Talking about Carlton, well Carlton beat Geelong in round five, and Fremantle, who would have thought? Fremantle in round three, but of course that game in Perth, but Fremantle played very well. Boundary throw in. Hawkins goes after the footy. All time consuming this. Bartell knows that. He ties it up. Two and a half minutes to go. What you would say about Geelong also, uh, Ottens and Corey are probably two of their best half a dozen players, and they're not, uh, they're not out there. So yeah. they've got improvement, and I think that having that sort of softer training regime early in the summer months is going to help them later on too. And so Wellingham, Collingwood have got a deep list as well, haven't they? Yeah. Fine-tune this team a number of times through the year. Johnson got it from Varco. Varco's kicks a good one to Stokes. This has been the difference tonight. They've had more open forward lines when they've gone forward. Stokes turns his man inside out and then leans back, and that's going to be very sweet. Stokes kicks his third. He'll feel like he's back. And it's fair to say, I think, that we hope Michael Johnson learns his lesson as well as Stokes and comes back and plays this sort of football. Well, Thomas ran in after you to make sure approach to oh, Long. So I'm getting a three. Go Hawkins plays in. on. Ablett's away. Umpire's still talking. Ablett runs to half forward. Bacon, goal square, goes again with a long kick. But unlike Stokes, it doesn't bounce through. 
We're just looking at the Geelong disposals. They've had a lot of them, but Hawkins has had 13 disposals, and that's the minimum of their 22. Mm. They've really spread it over their whole group tonight. Johnson to Wellingham, who will be better for the gallop. I guess the question uh, that needs to be asked is when Brad Ottens comes back into the side, do you go back to the three-prong forward line for the uh, the catch with Hawkins, Mooney and Podsy Adley? Who are you asking? Kelly kicks it to Brad. <laughs> for you sure. me, I wouldn't be. No. Here's Thomas. You weren't asking me, but I wouldn't be either. <laughs> Kick goes down towards half forward. Taken by Kelly. Milburn sweeps it forward. Taylor, Ablett. Bartell has been terrific. Especially in the tough times during the third term. Varko back to Ablett. Pushes off an opponent. Ball, who looks very tired. Bartell again just spots in right. Inside the last minute on Friday Night Football. The clash of the top two. And certainly Geelong have put their stamp on this game. It's a five-goal game. I'm just thinking if Tom Hawkins could play down back. I think he probably could have. I've actually been really impressed with him behind the ball, even against Brisbane last week. He looked really comfortable running towards the goal. Um, he was a father son, but he would have been a top uh, top round draft pick, and he knows his way around the game as a footballer. So uh, they might try that later on. Stokes has done a lot right tonight. Well, Maxwell's kick putting huge pressure on O'Brien. Wojcicki comes in and ices the cake. They're going to win by six. Yes, I've got to feel that was. Uh... That was just really the final goal. Of the game has been decided for a few minutes now. But I would have thought on that Geelong Ruck situation, Odds is a class Ruckman, but I reckon Hawkins is a backup. Yep. Is a better backup than uh, than Blake. Yep. In all the things he can do within the game, not as a Ruckman, but as a just the versatility. As a spare, yeah. Yeah, I've been really impressed with uh, Tom Hawkins. He started the game really well. Again, I guess running towards the goal as opposed to coming out from uh, from full forward. So. That's the, uh, one of the challenges for the Dijon coaching staff as the season unfolds. There's a little sidelight. They've won their last 16 quarters they've played Geelong. Each quarter they have outscored the opposition in their four-win winning streak. It's a club record and unprecedented over a four-week period in VFL-AFL history. They're going through a dominating little period. Maybe this win slightly has blown out breaking. in the last couple of minutes. It flatters them slightly, I think, 36 points, but it's a huge win. They took Collingwood's best shot and matched it with some interest. Twelve fourteen to six fourteen, and the biggest crowd ever to see Geelong in a home and away match, and the Cats win by thirty six points.